To be able to anticipate when a stock is likely to go up or down really requires the understanding of the relationship between buyers and sellers. If there are more buyers, then the stock will go up. And if there are more sellers, then the stock will go down. And we use charts to be able to anticipate the likelihood in which direction the stock will go. A chart is just a visual representation of past price performance of a particular stock and is always read from left to right, with the right being the most recent price action. If we didn't have charts, we would be looking at a spreadsheet full of different numbers and it would be very difficult to piece together what is going on with the stock. Has it been going up? Has it been going down? Is it trading sideways? And at what prices is the stock having trouble breaking through? If we took some time to read this, then we can answer all those questions, but it would take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So by placing the past price performance in a visual way, we are able to quickly identify certain assumptions about the stock. This is called a line chart, and it really just provides two pieces of information, the overall trend and common price areas where the stock has trouble either going up or down. Line charts are great for long-term investors, but as day traders, we need more information that will provide clues as to what the price may do in the near future, and we get this by using candlestick charts. Candlesticks help us determine the sediment between buyers and sellers. If the buyers are in control, then the stock will rise. And if the sellers are in control, then the stock will fall. And we can determine who is in control by reading the color and the shape the candlesticks make. Here is a candlestick chart representing price movement using candlesticks. You see how all the candlesticks have different shapes and sizes with different sequences of colored patterns. Now looking at this chart, I bet you can pick out some great places to buy and some great places to sell. Well, that's the easy part when looking at a chart that is already printed. But trading becomes really difficult when you're trying to anticipate moves in real time. So by looking at the most recent candlestick and taking note of its color, its shape, and its size, we can make better judgments on what the price will do next, giving us more timely entries and exits. A candlestick provides four pieces of information, the opening price, the closing price, the highest price, and the lowest price of a specific time period. And that time period can be anything you choose. It can be a one month, a one week, a one day, or even one minute. And this time frame is chosen when we pull up our charts. So when we open up our charting platform, we should be able to change the time frame of whatever we want our candlesticks to represent. Right now, this is the daily chart of Apple. And we can see that by the D represented up here, and it also says 1D, and if I hover over it, it says 1 day. So this is the daily chart, and what that means is each one of these candlesticks represents one day's worth of price action. So let's take this big candle right here. If I hover over it and come down over here, it shows the date of February 4th, 2019. And if I go over one candlestick over, now the date is February 5th, 2019. If I go over another one, February 6th, 2019. So you see that each one of these candlesticks, again, represents one day's worth of price action. And each day is going to have an opening price a high price of that day, a low price of that day, and a closing price of that day. And you can see what those prices are by looking at the four prices represented up here. There's an O, which stands for open, an H stands for high, a L stands for low, and a C stands for close. So whenever you hover over each one of these candles, all those prices change and you're able to see the opening price, the high price, the low price, and the closing price of that day. So since this is the daily chart, it's all represented in days. If I wanted to go into a different time frame, such as, let's go to the monthly chart. I come over here, click one month. Now each one of these candlesticks represents one month worth of price action. So if we took, let's take this red candle right here, this month is June 2017. If I go over one candle, now it's July 2017. I go over another candle, now it's August 2017. And each one of these has an opening price for that month, the highest price of that month, the lowest price of that month, and the closing price of that month. So whatever time frame you choose, 
that is going to be whatever the candle represents. If I wanted to look at the one minute chart, I go to one minute and now each one of these candlesticks represents one minute worth of price action. So as stated before, each candlestick provides us with four pieces of information. The opening price for the time period, the highest price of that time period, the lowest price of that time period, and the closing price of that time period. The boxed area of the candlestick is called the body, and this represents the opening price and the closing price of the time period that you have chosen. The lines at the top and the bottom of the body are called the wicks, and this represents the lowest price of the time period and the highest price of the time period. If we were looking at the one minute time frame, each one of these candles would represent one minute worth of trading. So at the start of that one minute, we would have an opening price. And during that one minute, the price will fluctuate going up and down, making new highs and new lows until the end of that one minute in which the candle will have a closing price. If the close is higher than the opening price, then it will form a green candle. Once it closes, a new candle will form, then begins a new one minute candle, which will have an opening price. It will fluctuate up and down. And at the end of that one minute, it will have a closing price. And if the close is lower than the opening price, that candle will form red. Once these candles have closed, they begin to take a shape. And that shape can tell us a lot about what the sentiment was for that time period between buyers and sellers. Here is some common bullish candle shapes that can tell you a lot about how buyers and sellers interacted within the candle time period. So let's say that we are looking at the one minute chart and each one of these candles represented one minute worth of price action. The candle on the left has a small body at the top with a long wick at the bottom. What do you think happened during this one minute between buyers and sellers? The one minute opening price was right here, but during that one minute worth of trading, sellers were able to push this stock all the way down here, making a new low. But eventually buyers stepped in to push the price right back up. So that once that one minute closed, we actually closed higher than the open pretty much right where we started. This could be a sign that there's strong support somewhere around here where it's getting buyers interested wanting to push the price back up. If you saw this type of candle shape forming on a downtrend, this could be a possible sign of a reversal. The candle in the middle has a long body with short wicks at the top and the bottom. So what can you tell about buyers and sellers during this one minute candle? The opening price is way down here. It barely goes lower, but at the end of that one minute, we close way up here. This means that buyers were in full control and has pushed the stock strongly upwards without any resistance from sellers. What about this candle here on the right? We have a short bodied candle right in the middle of these two long wicks. That means that there was an even tug of war between buyers and sellers. We tried to go down, but then get pushed back up. We tried to go up, but then we got pushed right back down. And once this one minute closes, we pretty much stay right where we opened at, right in the middle. This would be a sign of indecision to neither go up nor down, but in the end, we slightly prefer up because it forms a green candle. All right, so in every example you'll see going forward, you'll notice that all my bullish candles are white and all my bearish candles are pink. And I have this set up for a few different reasons, but once you set up your charts, you'll be able to change your candle colors to whatever you like. No matter what color you choose, you should be able to tell if the stock is going up or down. So right here is an example of a candle with a long bottom wick at the end of a downtrend. Notice that we have this big downtrend. Then at the very bottom, we have this candle that has formed that has a long wick. That means sellers have tried to push this stock even further down, but then the buyers quickly stepped in because maybe they thought that this is a good time to buy. Maybe the stock has gone down long enough. Maybe there's some support right here, but this wick tells us that buyers have stepped in to push this stock up and then thus begins a reversal to the upside. Here we have some common bearish candle shapes. What do you think happened on this candle on the left? The price opened right here. It tried to go higher, but then eventually got shoved right back down to pretty much close right where we opened at. This tells us that there were buyers trying to push the stock up, but eventually the sellers outnumbered the buyers pushing the stock right back down. On this candle, the price opened up here, but then continued to go lower to close way down here. 
This candle will indicate that the sellers were in full control during this time period. This candle over here on the right would indicate a even tug of war between buyers and sellers. We tried to go up, got shoved down. We tried to go down, got shoved up. And in the end, we closed right in the middle. Now, since this candlestick is red, we slightly prefer down. Now looking at this candle right here in the yellow box, what do you think is going to happen next? We see a strong uptrend with a long topping wick at the top. Long wicks at the top is an attempt to go higher, but sellers eventually step in to push the stock right back down, which then signals a reversal. Knowing what the candle shapes can tell us about buyers and sellers is even more valuable when we look at them around major support and resistance levels. Now we'll talk about support and resistance coming up in another lesson, but in a nutshell, support is a price area where the stock has trouble going down because there are more buyers than sellers. And resistance is a price level where the stock has trouble going up because there are more sellers than buyers. In this example, I have drawn a resistance price level at $11.71 based off the price action inside the yellow box on the left. Now, if we were watching this stock as it was coming back up to $11.71, what could we predict may happen once the stock reached $11.71? We would predict that the price would drop and we would confirm that by noticing the long topping wick on the candle that has made the attempt up to $11.71. This shows that there is a lot of selling pressure at this $11.71 level, and the stock would most likely continue to go down. Here's an example where the buyers were strong enough to break through resistance. I've drawn a resistance level at 708 based off the three failed attempts inside these three yellow boxes. Now, each time the attempt was made to go higher than 708, we get a long topping wick. And each time we get these long topping wicks, the price falls down afterwards. But on the fourth attempt inside this blue highlighted box right here, we actually break through resistance, forming a long bodied candle. This candle shows us that buyers were in full control on the move to break through resistance and then continue higher. So as always, I hope this lesson has been informative and I want to thank you so much for watching.